Hey YouTube, so I wanted to do a video uh, specifically on how to incorporate pan, left to right pan, into your final mix down uh, as you record your song onto the Model 6, the Tascam Model 16. But I wanted to go beyond that and kind of show a quick process of how to actually even get started recording a song on here. I know a lot of people that they just don't know how to they do that. I've gotten a lot of comments uh, saying that they're lost on the Model 16, and I was too for a while. <laughs> a while, and uh, and I've even gotten some emails asking for some specific tutorials. I know I haven't done a Tascam video in a while. Uh, I've been really busy uh, with my job, you know, with this whole pandemic thing. But anyways. Uh, I thought I'll, on this long Memorial Day weekend, I thought I'd make the time and do a quick video again on how to incorporate pan adjustments into your final mix down, uh, but even go beyond that and show you if you if you haven't ever recorded on this, recorded a song and mixed it down to show you how that is. Uh, I'm, I'm going to play some drums and I'm going to play two guitar parts and a small uh, musical uh, arrangement and, and I'll show you how I do it and I'll probably just do the pan on the lead guitar and show you how all that works so anyways without further ado let's get started alright so if you've never actually even been able to get started on recording a song on this Tascam Model 16 I'm going to show you from the very beginning so what we're going to want to do first is I'm going to exit out here and show you exactly. Okay, we're just going to start here. No song. There's no song loaded up. We're wanting to do a new song. So I'm going to push the menu button. And then I'm going to select song. And then I'm going to push new. And now I'm going to, I want to name this so we don't get confused. And because of the subject matter of this video, it's going to be a, a pan effect. I'm just going to, I'm going to name it that. So it, it started on the letter P. And all I did was press the jog wheel and it, go, it automatically advances to the next letter. So you just scroll the jog wheel, and I'm going to go here to A, push the jog wheel, and, and just for simplicity's sake, so I don't have to roll all the way back to zero, I'm going to just go ahead and scroll here, and I'm going to leave the E, push it again, scroll here to D, panned. All right, so that's what we want. Press OK. OK. And now it's stored that song. So I'm going to exit out go home now see it's named pan so now we have a fresh blank slate there's nothing on any of the tracks and just that now i'm going to play drums on this song and so i've already got my gain level set to where i want them for the drums and i'm going to show you when i do the guitar part exactly how i set that gain but for right now because i was rehearsing the drums a little bit uh i selected the selector switch to live which if you're going to record you can record in live or you can record in mtr which is multi-track recorder but for this purpose on the drums anyways i'm going to record it in the live mode okay so i'm not going to have any compression on it i got my eqs at 12 o'clock and i'm not I'm going to put any effects on it except for right here I'm going to put some reverb on my hi-hat some large hall reverb yeah and then I'm going to also on the hi-hat I added a little bit of trouble just to make it a little bit crisp and I've already established my levels on this you'll notice I have the the PFL uh, depressed and that's just so I can kind of see the meter when it's playing and also when I play this drum part I want you to be able to see the meter actually showing the levels as I play the drums so that that's how you get started you start you name a song um, you, you you store that song and now you're in that song and you're gonna record and it only it'll only save it to that file Set your selector switch to live or M MTR, which I've done. Then you set your gain levels, which I'll show you momentarily. And because my drums are an electronic drum kit, I have two inputs here, and I'm going to make it a stereo mix. So I have the the left side turned all the way left and the right side all the way right. And because I'm running my hi-hat, I have an acoustic hi-hat on my drum kit, uh, I'm using a, a Shure SM57, and I'm just going to center that, all right? And so to, to get ready to record, you have to depress or arm these record buttons, just like that, all right? And so, like I said, I have all my other levels set, and the next step is simply to push 
record and then you'll start recording your song and um, I'll, whenever I do the guitar parts I'll show you how to actually set your levels uh, I'm also going to use a metronome here and the metronome is coming through bl via Bluetooth and I'm only going to hear it through my headphones and uh, just to kind of keep time on this and so you can pair another device run a metronome to kind of help you if you're playing drums and uh, you see I have it selected to live and that really well it has to be in live if you're Bluetooth because that's where the Bluetooth uh, um, channel or, or uh, input is so you have that selected live as well all right so without further ado all right so I've got the drones recorded and now I'm going to record two guitar parts I'm going to record a rhythm part and I'm going to record a lead and I'm using this Yamaha uh, Pacifica uh, 611 with this uh, flame maple top or flame top on it and uh, so at this point I'll show you here what the next step is is uh, you want to adjust your levels and so so I have my guitar into this amp here this line six and here are my leads right here this is coming in and I'm using a left and right channel now you'll see the, the green lights there. I have it set on live just, just for re uh, rehearsal purposes because if you have it on MTR you actually have to arm the channels, the record uh, buttons on the channels right here to actually hear sound if you have it on MTR but I have it on live so I can actually hear it through my through my computer monitors right here, my studio monitors. So again I have a left and a right input see the green light that's my channels that I'm using all my EQs at 12 o'clock I've not I don't have any effects now here on pan I have the left channel panned all the way left and the right channel pan all the way right and the reason I'm doing that is so I can actually have a stereo mix and so I've got my mains depressed so I can actually hear it through the thing through the studio monitors and now this pre-fade listen this is the the feature that I'm going to use to adjust my input levels so what I'm going to do first is right now you'll see there's nothing registering on the meter as I strum so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push for the left channel and you see I'm peaking and coming up a little high there so what I'll do is I'll turn this down just a hair until I'm not coming above I really don't want to go above the zero so I turn it down a little bit there turn it down a little bit more and I can you can adjust it on your on your input too to where it's not so bad I'm gonna kind of leave it right and I'm gonna turn it down a little bit more I'm gonna leave it right there because so I'm actually gonna be arpeggiating my chords so I did it on the one side and now I'm gonna release that oh, I did the wrong one and release that and then I'm gonna push it here and again I got my see so you can see how much I turned down the gain on that one channel now I'm just measuring the other channel so you can see I'm almost peaking there so I'm gonna turn it down you can see it go down as, as I lower the gain level to turn it all the way down so now when I press them both now I've got both of the PFLs depressed both of them are depressed that's the gain levels for both channels so that's how you adjust your levels so another thing that I did was I played my drum part and I saw where it started on the track and I put a, I'm going to put a marker there I, I, I recorded the time when it, when the drums actually come in and I'm going to put a marker there and the reason I'm going to do that is so when I'm actually mixing down I'll kind of know where, where the parts are and if I want to make any adjustments while it's mixing down I can so I'll show you that right now now my drums actually come in at 41 seconds so I'm going to roll this forward the jog wheel and I'm going to scroll it forward and I'm going to scroll it forward to I'm going to scroll it forward to 40 because it's actually at 41 and you see that mark I'm going to put a mark there that way if you push this rewind button here it goes all the beginning if you push the forward 
it stops right at your mark. Now my little song here ends, where I want it to end, is at a minute 53. So I'm gonna scroll forward to a minute 53, and I'm gonna push mark again. And so that's the parameters of my drum part that I wanna play my guitar over. So I'm gonna rewind it to that first marker, and then I'm gonna press record. Actually, I'll, I'll roll it back. I'll roll it back a little bit because I don't actually have a counting. Well, I do because uh, I'll just forward it here. Oops, push the wrong thing. Okay, so my I actually have a kind of a drum roll to, that'll serve to count it. So now I'm going to record my rhythm guitar part uh, using the levels that I just said. Now remember when you're going to record. And this is my rhythm track here. You have to arm your record track, your record buttons to record those tracks. Now the drums, I kind of got a level here already and I'm gonna turn these faders up just a little bit so I can hear it pretty good and uh, play my guitar over these drums. So without further ado, here we go. So I've recorded my rhythm guitar part over the drums, and I've rewinded it to the marker where it starts. And I'm going to press play, and at this point, I'll make adjustments to my uh, levels. Really, the, uh, I'm not worried about the EQ because my drum set has its kind of its own EQ, and I like it. And then, of course, my amp also. So I'm going to leave my EQs at 12 o'clock, except for my hi-hat adjustment. But I'm going to play this, and I'm going to listen to it and see if I got my volume levels to where I want them. Okay, so I actually like that, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record my lead part, and I'm going to switch, I'm going to move my, rather than putting another device on here, uh, like a, my Headrush foot controller, I'm just going to move the leads to the amp to the next two channels, and I'm going to record my lead that way. So, here I go. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I've got my drums, my rhythm guitar, and my lead recorded. And now I'm getting ready to do the mix down, uh, but I'm listening to it through a couple times to kind of get an idea. I'm trying to basically map it out uh, where I might want to add some pan effects or even some volume changes or something like that. I don't think I'm going to do any volume changes, but if you, if you wanted to do that, uh, as as you watch me do this process, you could you could make any changes, and it will directly um, be uh, heard. Whatever adjustments you make as it mixes down, it'll be heard on the final recording. And so I'm going to give you kind of a close-up view of what I'm about to do, and then uh, hopefully you'll get a good grasp of of how actually easy it is. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look. All right, so I have all my tracks on MTR, the tracks I recorded on. And I recorded uh, drums, which I'm using three channels because I have a acoustic hi-hat. Then I did my rhythm guitar. Now this is bass, but I actually recorded my lead right there. And you'll notice I have the PFL depressed on all the recorded channels. Now the ones that I didn't record on, I do not have it depressed. I have them, have them released. And also, I have added this large room reverb to my hi-hat, so I have AFL depressed, main depressed, and I don't have it muted, but I have the non-recorded tracks muted. All right, so you, you saw at the beginning, I used a metronome, and, uh, and I've already disconnected it. Of course, it doesn't show up on the recording anyways. But anyways, I have my marker set. The beginning of the song is at 40 seconds, and then I could fast forward and so where I want to stop the song is at a minute and 53 seconds. So the song is about a minute and what, 13 seconds long. 
All right, so I'll rerun because that's the point. Now, when you do a mix down on this Model 16, you have to start all the way at the beginning. And then once you get to the end of your song, then you can stop the mix down. And how this works is um, you have your levels where you want them. Again, I have the PFLs depressed just so I can watch the, the metering. Uh, you do not arm your recording, the record buttons on your tracks. Have everything unmuted. Uh, I have my stereo mix on my drums, my stereo mix on my rhythm guitar, and my stereo mix on my lead guitar. And the only thing I'm going to do is on the pan adjustments as it's mixing down. Now, let me back up. You don't have any of the tracks on. PFL is depressed, level set. When you do the final mix down, all you do is you press record at the very beginning. You have it all backed up all the way to the beginning. You press record and let it play through. And then you'll stop it, and it, that'll give you a final mix. And then it'll be a single stereo track. So that's that's the process. But as that's as that's playing out, I'm going to make adjustments on this. My lead track now. I know it says bass, but I actually have lead guitar in here. So what I'll do is there's certain points where I want the the sound to sweep left and right. And I'll do that as it's recording the mix down by adjusting these at the parts where I want it to happen. And so it's that simple. And you could do, you could, you could bring volume levels in as it's doing it. And all that will, will translate on your final mix, on your final track. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get this mix down started. All right, so I mixed down the song, and I made some adjustments, as you saw, while it was recording. And now what I'm going to do is actually save this, export it to a, a, a stereo track. And, and I'll show you how to do that right now. So once you've recorded it, uh, I just out of habit, I'll, I'll rewind the whole thing. All right, and now you press menu and you go to stereo mix export, press the jog wheel. Stereo mix export main stereo wave file, are you sure? Yes. It's doing its thing, rendering it. All right, there it is. So now to verify uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute all these tracks I'm gonna turn the faders down. I'm gonna release the mains on those tracks, and I'm gonna release the PFL, the prefade listen, so they're not registering on the meter. And now it's gonna play on this channel here. So I wanna be sure to select that to MTR, and I wanna unmute it come through the mains and I do want the PFL so I'm going to turn that up and so I'm going to select SD play plays on channels 13 or four, oops what did I do 13 or 14 enter and so I'm going to scroll down that's the song panned and there it is 
And so it started, or maybe it hasn't. So push play, there we go. Now I already know the song starts at 40 seconds. So I'm gonna go ahead and scroll forward to, to where it actually begins. I'll do it right there, that's good. So that's my little uh, mix down. Now, now I'm going to add it to the video, and, uh, and I'll let it play after this. But hopefully, hopefully that might have cleared something up. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult um, holding cameras, and, and you know I'm worried about different camera angles and things like that. But uh, hopefully you'll be able to decipher. Uh, it's actually pretty straightforward. You just got to know what buttons to push, which position switches need to be in to make it happen. But as you'll hear in this recording, it actually panned, the lead guitar is all I really panned in it uh, on certain parts, I panned it back and forth. Uh, but it's this is actually a very good device. It has superb recording quality. And I recorded with uh, this Line 6 uh, Spider 5 240 watt half stack uh, using a Yamaha uh, Pacifica 611 with a Seymour Duncan like a a P90 in the neck and then a, a, some a humbucker in the bridge. I, I'm not really sure what model it is. I just got the guitar today. <laughs> I've been having my eye on it for a while. It was in the local music store and I went in there and I told him I wanted that guitar. I've been wanting it. He knocked a hundred bucks off of it and I bought it. So I thought I would use it for the first time recording uh, for this little uh, tutorial on how to do pan effects on your mix down. So anyways, uh, I'm glad, thank you so much for watching. I hope I hope you enjoyed it. And I, I really do appreciate all the support you guys have given me uh, as I've done these task cam tutorials. And I've learned a lot because I've made some serious mistakes. This is not, let me repeat, this is not a DAW controller. <laughs> <laughs> I've made that mistake and, and I'll, in all fairness Sweetwater on their product description on their on their website it said integrated seamless DAW integration and being a layperson I just that registered to me as a DAW controller but it's not the Tascam Model 16 is not a DAW controller nor is the Model 24 the Model 12 is a DAW controller but this is not but this is a darn good device very good device and you know to be able to to watch the faders move on your on your in your DAW by control that's really not that big of a deal to me I'd rather have more tracks because it is a seamless back and forth with the, with the USB connection it's a great device anyways again uh, thank you so much for watching thank you so much for your support and I have you hope you have uh, many adventures as you apply what you've learned about this device to your own music and I would love for some of you to do your own tutorials uh, tag me uh, ha uh, in, in your in your videos and I would love to see what you come up with using this device anyways I've, I've rambled on enough enjoy the song and thank you for watching peace